Now, let's look at our scenario. What did we want to do? We want to allow PC1 to reach server cbt.com and we want to deny everyone else. Now, one thing about these uh, access control lists or about the rules that you create, if you're creating a rule, you should uh, be careful that the rule which is more specific should be on top and the rule which is more general should be at the bottom of the uh, access control list. Meaning, if you put the more general one, then your IP, your uh, router will find a match there. Then it will not come to the next line and check everything. Uh, let me explain this on uh, another page. Uh, let me clean this one. Okay. Uh, here. Imagine that you have this list. And based on this, this is my ACL. So first, uh, let me change my font, make it bigger. Okay. Now here, I'm saying permit PC1, or let me write it in our language. Allow, allow PC1 to go to www. or let's say cbt with server and then after that I say deny everyone else right uh, this, this is this is exactly our scenario I say allow PC1 meaning just this guy can go out and reach this server and then after that I'm saying these guys, everyone else, meaning all these guys inside this uh, red circle, all these guys are blocked. So everyone else, these guys are everyone else, right? So here is the list. I'm saying allow PC1 and deny everyone else. Now look at the order. If I change this order and instead of this, this I write deny everyone else and then put PC1 here. So when the router receives a packet, the router goes through the uh, source IP address of that packet. It checks first. Now, instead of this everyone first, I have to, this is everyone, not everyone else. Now, if I put here, deny everyone, then after that I say, allow PC1 to go to CBTV server. The router receives a packet here. This router receives a packet. It looks at the packet. It says source IP address is everyone. So PC1 is everyone. So block it. The packet matched with the first rule. So it never comes to the second rule. So that's why I'm saying if you put the more general one on top, then your router might not come to the second line because router always starts from top of the list and it goes one by one if it cannot find a match with the first one it goes to, to the second one if it cannot match a, uh, find a match with the second one it goes to the third one fourth one and so on and so forth to the bottom of the list now if you put something that you have to put it on top uh, to uh, if you put something that you have to put it on bottom on top of the list then your router will not go and check the other rules that you have here. So you need to be very careful about this configuration. Okay, so now I know PC1 to reach server. This is my uh, specific, more specific one because I'm talking about one PC and then I'm talking about everyone else. So this is more general. I need, I know that this one is first and this one is second okay so since I know that I have to go here and configure that access control list now where should I configure it if you look at this topology between PC1 and this server there are two routers so which router should I choose router 1 or router 2 now if you configure this access list on router 1 it works if you configure it on router 2, again it works. But 
if you configure it on router 1 there will be a problem and the problem is this let me again go back to a clean page here is a, another page now let's say I have two routers here this is one router and this is the other router and imagine there is a third network here okay so this is your router one here you have a route. let me put it here uh, inside here you have router two and this one is your router three now and uh, one thing more I forgot to put the network here is your network the whole network and PC1 is here here is PC1 and uh, this is the other network let me draw it in another color now here is the other network the network that you had your server I write server okay so here is the server now I wanted to allow access to PC1 and deny everyone else let's say PC1 is allowed fine there is a PC2 here as well that this guy is blocked now you have a network here and there is a network here R3 now if you configure your access list on router R1 this is a standard access list and if you remember here uh, I said standard access list go in and check source IP address and not destination IP address so they just look at the source IP address meaning this packet comes from where wherever it comes from then I look at the source if I have to block it I block it if I have to allow it I allow it so router 1 receives a packet from PC 1 it says okay this guy comes from PC 1 I allow you can go now let's say a packet comes from PC 2 it comes to router 1 this guy, this poor PC2, he doesn't want to go to this server. He doesn't want to go here. He wants to go to R3. Now, when router1 receives this packet, router1 says, source address. What is the source address? Source address is PC2. So PC2 should be blocked. Router1 doesn't care where PC2 wants to go. He wants to go to R3, he wants to go to server, wherever it wants to go, it should be blocked here because it looks at the source address. But let's say if I configure it on router 2. When you configure it on router 2, again router 2 also checks which source, but there is the dif there is a small difference. When you configure that access list, after configuring that access list, you have to apply it to an interface. So here, if I configure it on router 1, I have to apply it either on this interface or this interface. Meaning, I'm telling to router 1, if a packet comes from this interface, or, I mean, a packet comes in from this interface, or if a packet goes out of this interface, apply that rule on it. And for router 1 it doesn't matter because when PC2 comes if it comes in it will block it if it goes out it will block it but when we come to router 2 if here I tell router 2 that block PC2 if he goes out of this interface block it here then when PC2 packet goes all the way to router 2 and it wants to go out to R3 then router 2 will not block it because I told our router 2 that block PC2 when it wants to go out of this interface because when you create an access list you have to apply it on an interface otherwise the router is not a smart device that knows where, I mean, where to put this access list because when you create an access list the access list is inside the router now I have to tell the router where to use this access list you want to use it for what purpose? 
I want to use it on this interface, for example, to block the packets. Or I'm going to use it on this interface. So I have to tell the router on which interface use this access list. Then that router will look at that interface and check if the traffic comes to, from that interface, then it applies the access list. Still, I have to tell the router if the packet goes out of the, the interface or if the packet comes into the interface, then apply this access list. So let's go back to our scenario and do the configuration. So uh, based on whatever I just explained now, I, it's better to go to router 2 to do the configuration. So there is one rule here. We can come up with a rule with, uh, with a principle. If you're using standard access list, which works based on the source address, always configure it on a router closest to the destination. Let's see uh, what is this destination here. Look, PC, I say block PC2 when he wants to go to CBT server. So source PC2, anything from here, wants to go to CBT server. So this is destination, this is source. So when you want to configure standard access list, first find out what is your source, what is your destination. Now when you know about your destination, then go and find out what is the closest router to that destination. If this is my destination, when I come up, this is the closest router uh, to the destination. So I have to configure my access list on router 2. So let's go to router 2 and configure the access list. To configure the access list, you have to go to global configurations. So type global configurations. Then you type access list. Let's use help question mark. Now, Remember, I told you there are some numbers that represent different access lists. Based on the numbers, you can recognize what type of access list you're using. Now, here you have to use the number. Now, what is that number? Look, for a standard access list, I have to use a number between 1 to 99. Now, what is this number? This number is just a reference for your own router, meaning the router looks at this number. It says, OK. This is a standard access list, and this is the access list that I have to use for this particular purpose. Because you might have so many access lists on your routers. So how does the router should know which access list is for what purpose? By looking at these numbers. So here I have to choose a number. It doesn't matter what number you choose. Whatever between 1 to 99 represents standard access list. So here I'm going to choose, for example, 25 or any other number that you like. So access list 25. Now the router knows access list that I'm creating is a standard access list. Question mark. It says, what do you want to do? You want to deny or you want to permit? OK, remember I told you, you have to put the more specific one on top. Well, more specific is what? Permit PC1 based on our scenario. Here is the scenario. Allow PC1. Uh, let me clear this. These things that I have created here. OK. This one and this one. And all these things here. OK. And the rest be there. So, our rule says allow PC1 to reach server CBT bit. Well, we want to do that on PC. Allow PC1. Where is my router to? Okay. Allow PC1. So, permit. You want to permit? Question mark. Permit who? What is the IP address of that, that guy, that uh, computer, that printer, whatever that you have. What is the IP address of that guy? So I have to put the IP address of my PC1. So what was the IP address of PC1? It was uh, 192.168. Uh, I cannot find it here. Let's go to PC1. I forgot what was the IP address of PC1. PC1. We type show IP interface brief. 
Here you can see IP address of PC1 